So I'm Alexander Dominikus from Bochum University of Applied Science, and I'm the Moodle administrator here, also in Bochum. Okay, and today I want to talk about how to build your own Moodle Docker testing environments by using Docker. And before I start talking, I just want to give some sort of a trigger warning, since this talk is a little bit technical, so I want to give you some content of Docker files and Docker Compose files and so on. But I want uh, to please you please keep sitting, since um, on the last slide you will find a, a link to my GitHub where you find all the examples and so on, so you can have a look if you want it. Just, yeah, this is okay. So, some, um, so, so it's working? Yes, it's working. Okay, about this talk. First, in the first part of the talk, I want to introduce you how to build a minimal Moodle via Docker. So this is the basis for the second part where I give you a few examples how to do some modifications. So in this, for example, if you want a PHP, a PHP my admin, or if you want a cron process or whatever, and this is the second step. But first, before I start to introduce you how to build your minimal Moodle environment, I want to spend a few words about Docker in general. So why should you use Docker containers at all? So to answer this question, one should understand the aim of Docker containers. So Docker containers are made to make an application portable and self-contained. So that means a Docker container is an, an encapsulation of an application and which has its own isolated instance of an operating system. And this Docker container is living on a host system. And from this encapsulation we have, that changes on the host system won't change anything on the Docker containers. And in case of testing scenarios, this is exactly what you want. Since regardless on the host system, you have identical testing systems and this is uh, in testing, this is exactly what you need and what you want. And um, yeah, also you can avoid a, a whole, avoid a whole class of bugs and errors which are stemming in classical setup from changes on the host system. So imagine you are in a classical setup, you don't have any Docker containers, then you change something on the host system and this will lead you to changes on the testing environments and you will get some the, some crazy bugs and errors and you have to find them. But if you use Docker containers, you won't have all these bugs and errors, so my advice is to use Docker containers if you want to spend your time for testing and not for searching bugs. Okay. Next, if you decide to use Docker, then you have to, uh, you have to decide if you choose a pre-built Docker testing environment or if you build your own testing environment. If you build a pre-built one, uh, if you use a pre-built one, then you can, you, you can, for example, choose this excellent one uh, Moodle Docker testing environment for Moodle HQ, or for example, Bitnami Moodle, and there are so many more examples. And if you choose this pre-built one, then you can start instantly. Since it's pre-configured, it's pre-built, and you can directly start testing. But imagine at some point, you want to modify something then it could be a really a hard task to do these modifications since the modifications you want to do depends on the complexity on a testing environment. And so this could be really hard. On the other hand, if you choose a, a self-built system, then you, start, then you start with a minimal Moodle system and then you add everything you need. So you end up with a perfectly adapted testing environment and you also know this uh, testing environment perfectly since it was you who made this testing environment. For sure, you have to learn Docker before you start to build your own minimal Moodle testing environment, but nevertheless, this is the way we want to go here. So, next point is how to start. So first, we have to install Docker and Docker Compose because this is the basis for our work. Then we have to think about our needs, since we want a minimal Moodle testing environment, meaning that 
We only want the necessary things to run Moodle. So we have to look at the system requirements. So the system requirements say, we need the PHP language of at least version 7.3. We need a database. Here we choose the MariaDB database, which is just for simplicity, and which should be of version at least 10.2.29. All this is depending on the version, the Moodle version 4.2.4.0.3. And for sure, you need a web server to have access to your Moodle system. Okay, these are the three basic ingredients which will build your minimal Moodle testing environment. And these are the three services which we now uh, add to our Docker Compose file. So now, what is the Docker Compose file? No? Okay. Okay, a Docker Compose file is just a plain text file. In this case, in, it is a GEML file. And in this Docker Compose file, you define your, all your single services and also the configuration of each service. So let's have a look at this Docker Compose file. So here, we start with the, with the Docker Compose version. In this case, this is version two. We could also choose version three, but version two, two is a little bit more simple. And then we add the services. So this is the database service, the PHP service, and the web server, so the Nginx service. In the end, we also define a network, which is for the communication between each of these services. And in principle, that's it. So now let's have a look at the definition of each single service. So here, this is the database service. In the beginning, you choose the image. This is just a MariaDB image. So what is an image? An image is the basis for a Docker container. So an image has everything inside which is needed to build a Docker container. And once you have this Docker container, you can run it, and then you have a running MariaDB database. So that's it. We have this restart option, meaning that in case of a crash or in case of an error, this container should restart. Then we give the container a name, and we have some environment variables. So in this case, this is the MySQL user, that is the password for the MySQL user, and it is the database, so this is the Moodle database in this case, which is created when a container is built. Here I have to say, in sake of security, this is not optimal since we define the MySQL user and the MySQL password in a plain text file, and this is, uh, in principle, this is a security risk. But this is only for testing and not for a production system, so this is okay. If we want to do it more secure, then we could add Docker secrets, but I think in this case, this is as, as simple as possible. Moreover, we have here some volumes. And what is a volume? So, as I said before, this Docker container is an encapsulation which is living on some host system. And if you create a database inside the Docker container, then, and then crash the Docker container or shut it down, then all the data will be lost. So, we create the database, uh, the database outside the container on the host system, and therefore the data will be persist when the container shuts down. Moreover, you have the, the configuration file, which is for the configuration of the database, which, for example, has these uh, character set and so on. And we have the port for the communication and the network for the communication with the other services. So it is the database service. Next, we have the PHP service. And here, we don't have an image, but we have a Docker file. I would say in a minute what's behind this Docker file. But first, I will say something about the remaining configuration points. So here, uh, we also give the container a name, and here we again have some volumes. So this is the Moodle folder, which is living on the host system. This is the Moodle data folder, which is also living on the host system. And we have the uh, PHP configuration file, which is the PHP INI, which is also living on the host system. And there you can do some changes on these configuration files without entering your Docker container. So, here the last option is a new option, which is meaning that um, if the PHP container starts, then it has to wait for the database to be running, since 
It's depend on it. It depends on it. Okay. So now let's have a closer look at this PHP Docker file. So what's behind this PHP Docker file? Whoops. It's too. So what's behind this PHP Docker file? So in principle, we could choose a PHP image here since uh, we want a PHP service. But remembering that the Moodle system needs some PHP extensions to be installed. For example, this is the this is curl or zip or gd or mb string or whatever. And imagine that your PHP image does not have all these extensions, extensions installed originally, then you have to add them. So what do you do? <clears throat> so you take this PHP image, and then in this example here, you install the zip program. And after, after that, you add the PHP extension zip. And in the same way, you can add every single PHP extension which, isn't, which is not contained in the PHP image originally. So you can fulfill all these, these requirements here. And that's all the magic of this Docker file. Okay, the last point is the web server. Here in this case, this is the Nginx image. So we have an Nginx web server. We could uh, use an Apache server the same way, but an Nginx server is a little bit more lightweight, so I choose this one. Uh, we give the container a name, and we have a configuration file on the host system, which, is, uh, which, is, uh, which does the configuration for each Nginx web server identical. Moreover, we have a port, this is port 8088, where we have access to the web server, and in principle, that's it. So we have to save this Docker Compose file and then run the containers. So if we run the container, then we see that the network is created, all the containers will be built and then started, and then we can check if we had access, if we have access to the Moodle system um, at localhost port 8088. And if we check it, we see, okay, we have a running minimal Moodle system at localhost 8088. And in principle, it was quite easy. So this is just the basis for our work. Since now we have a minimal Moodle system, but we have to do some customizations now. So next step is to add a PHP MyAdmin, which is just, just an example. You can add everything you want here. So how do you add a PHP MyAdmin? So first you have to shut down the, your containers, and you then you have enter. Uh, you have to enter your Docker Compose file. In your Docker Compose file, you simply add your PHP MyAdmin service. So here are the three remaining services of your minimal Moodle, and then you add your PHP MyAdmin service. So you choose the PHP MyAdmin image. You give the container a name, and you define a port where you want to have access to your PHP MyAdmin. Moreover, you have to say the PHP MyAdmin where to find the Moodle, uh, the Moodle database. And in this example, this is simply the name of the Moodle database service. So again, that's it. We have, we have defined the PHP MyAdmin, uh, PHP MyAdmin service. So let's test if we ha have access to PHP MyAdmin. And if we enter localhost port 8089, we see we have a PHP MyAdmin, and again, this was quite easy. So now, next task is a little bit more challenging. We want to have a Chrome process. So each Moodle system needs a Chrome process to run properly, so we want to add, the, add it. So what is a Chrome process? A Chrome process is just a PHP script which is running regularly. A PHP script is meaning we have to choose a PHP image. But how can we do that this PHP image is running regularly? And to answer this question, we will have a look at this Docker file here. So what do we do? We choose a PHP image. And then we use a cron program. So in a Unix world, if you want to do some scheduled task or some, uh, yeah, some regularly if you want to run some scripts here regularly or so on, you'd use the cron program. So we install the cron program inside the container, and then we can define a cron tab. And in this cron, uh, cron tab, 
it's just defined that PHP should run this cron.php, which is living on, in the Moodle folder, every minute, and that's it. Finally, we simply have to say that this uh, cron program has to run when the container starts, and that's it. So, for the sake of completeness, of a look at the remaining configuration points. So, here we have these volumes from option, and this, uh, this is meaning that we give the uh, Docker Moodle cron service access to the volumes of the Docker Moodle app, and in principle, this service needs access to the Moodle folder, since in the Moodle folder is the cron.php script living. So, moreover, we have a volume on the host system where you find log files. This is just a nice feature, this is not necessary. Okay, and in principle, again, that's it. We have to save this Docker Compose file and then check if we have a running uh, cron, uh, cron process. So we start the containers, and then we check the logs of this Docker Moodle cron service. And if we check them, then we see we have an executed schedule task one, we have an executed schedule task two, and so on and so on. And this meaning that we have a running cron process. And again, this was quite easy. So the last point I want to add is a reverse proxy. So why do we need a, re re a reverse proxy? Remembering that we had this Moodle system, as we have access to the Moodle system at localhost port 8088, and we have access to phpMyAdmin at localhost port 8089. So now imagine we have 20 different Moodle testing uh, systems on a local machine, then you have to remember all these ports, and this will drive you crazy. So, Moreover, if you want to have online, online access to your minimal Moodle, then you have to expose all these ports to the internet, and this is really a security risk. So I would advise you not to do this. Instead, we want to use a reverse proxy. So what is a reverse proxy? In this case, our reverse proxy is traffic, and traffic is also living in a Docker container, and traffic will lead you to, your, uh, to the matching um, the service. So what does that mean? We define a rule, so in this case it's just a URL, and we say we want to, ex uh, we want to have access to our minimal Moodle system via the URL moodle.localhost, and traffic will lead us to this service. Moreover, we want to have access to our PHP admin via the URL pma.localhost, and traffic will do it for you. So, this is in principle what, what a reverse proxy do. So this also means that you don't have to export, uh, expose all the ports, you just have to export, uh, expose these ports 80 and port 443, which are the standard ports. So how can we add this reverse proxy? First, we have to shut down all the containers again. And then we have to set up traffic, which is a reverse proxy. How do we set up traffic? I don't want to explain how to do this here, but if you're interested in it, you can look at my GitHub, then you find a, a little ex example about the setup. So imagine we have a running uh, reverse proxy, and then we enter our Docker Compose file. So now we have the configuration of the Nginx service, which is the web server. First, we have exposed the ports here, but we don't want to expose any ports. So we remove the ports, and instead, we add some labels. And in this label, we define that we want to have access to the web server via the URL moodle.localhost. And that's it. The one, thing, one additional thing we have to do is to define another network, which is the network which is needed for the communication with the reverse proxy. So again, save this Docker Compose file, and see if we have access to the minimal Moodle, and we see we can access our minimal Moodle at moodle.localhost. And again, it was not so hard task. So this was the last example, and finally, I have to say thank you for your attention. And If you're still interested in it, you can look at the examples at my GitHub, 
And yeah, I just have to say, are there any questions? Uh, thank you. Uh, about how much RAM should I plan on using for that Docker container that you've set up? Oh, please repeat, repeat, please. How much memory should I expect to use for that Docker container you've set up? Um, in principle, it is uh, the same amount of memory if, we, if you install this, uh, this setup in a classical way. So if you um, use an Apache server and a database and so on. So in principle, it is not more, man more memory. The only problem you have is if you have more than one testing environment, then in a classical way, you just copy the, uh, the whole environment folder and then you have an additional Nginx server, you have an additional database, and you have an additional web server. So in a classical way, you can, you can use m some different testing environments on one web server but in this setup, you have a web server, a database, and a, a PHP for every testing environment. And then you have some, you need some more memory, but in principle, it is, uh, you can compare it to the classical setup. 